Thank you, Carol. You're muted. I said, it looks like we're going to have a nice short meeting. That's my hope. Uh oh, I still can't hear you. Well, I unmuted. You can hear me. I can hear you. Hmm. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can't hear you. Uh, oh, no. You try again. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, yes, oh. yes. I had to change the audio feed, whatever. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> that's good. What I said was it looks like a nice short meeting. Yes. You you know, I'm glad you slowed down a little bit. You were pretty diligent there with all those handouts. Yeah, yes. <laughs> well, we only met. I think it was two weeks ago, and I, I I thought maybe it was time for me to. Yeah. Yeah. Just take take a breath. Yeah. <laughs> you know, before the meeting gets started, I don't need to bring this up during the meeting, or okay. maybe I do. But you know, I just saw the policy that happened at Pittsfield with the homeless people. Yes. Yeah. You know, we used to have a problem with David Magadini, who's now housed. Yeah. Um, are you anticipating any issues with anyone coming in who doesn't have a you know place to stay, like having to stay in the library during the day? Um, we definitely have folks who, I, I don't know what their housing situation is, but use the, you know, utilize the library as a place to, as a space to be, um, yeah. during the day. I am currently reading, oh, perfect. um, this and, um, and when I finish it, my hope is to be in touch with Construct mm -hmm. about how the library can best serve the needs of people who are experiencing homelessness. That's great. But I mean, I, I, you know, the main thing was with them was them trying to sleep overnight on the library grounds. I'm sure you followed that. Yeah, I saw that. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's sad that we even have to have this discussion that it's come to this, you know, won't go out. Um, thank you for being on top of that. Yeah, no, um, you know, I mean, I think, well, libraries are a space where everyone can come and I, you know, mm -hmm winter's coming and the housing situation in this area is I know awful no but at least at least we got one more building saved you know yes yeah well that's amazing that that book even has to be published but you know yes I mean well it's a big um it's a big conversation in the library yeah. world there's an amazing movie ah uh, I can't remember what it's called now. The Public, I think. Mm -hmm. It was based on a true story. I think um, one of the Sheen, Martin Sheen, maybe mm -hmm. directed it. But it's about, um, uh, I believe it takes place in Cleveland, Ohio. And it is so freezing one night and the library mm -hmm. closing and people who don't have a... Um, place to go refuse to leave because it is yeah yeah so cold outside i don't even think we have an emergency shelter in great barrington do we i don't know that we do i don't believe so no, so. Yeah. no. well okay. construct may have that for i don't know i don't know I'll yeah be... well thank you for even having the book you know and being oh, on yeah. top of that because that you know, I've been up to the Pittsfield Library many times when I'm there. And of course, there's people, they talk kind of loud and they all hang out, but you know, they they're they're treated respectfully and somehow they it works having them there all the time. Mm -hmm. But then when I read the news article, I thought, uh-oh, this is going to create a new conversation mm -hmm. that we'll that we'll probably at some point have to have down here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else coming? Um, I uh I hmm. There's someone here who's a Zoom user. I don't know. Okay. Margaret's not coming, but you know it's five thirty-two. I don't see Patrick. Yeah, Patrick was on here, and then I promoted him to panelist, and now he's yes. Now we all I have in my view is you and me. 
Yeah, me too. And there's someone here in the attendees Zoom user who it I'm not. It's four. All right, so. I'm gonna I'm gonna allow this Zoom user to talk and to. Yeah, to you've got four are. participants. They're muted. Zoom user, we're not sure who you are, but if um if you're a, a trustee, um please unmute yourself. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's me. Somehow I've been turned into a Zoom user. <laughs> I'm promoting Zoom. you to a panelist now. Now it's my legal name, Zoom <laughs> user. I don't know how that happened. Uh, panelist, let's see here. Yeah, I just, you're a panelist now. There we go. Hey, there have, you are. I have no idea how, how this works anymore. Every, every month it's some new surprise. Um, <laughs> So let's see here. Uh, yeah, we know Margaret is uh, under the weather, but everybody else should be here. So I'm not sure. But if Carol, you got on, that's a good sign. That means that the Zoom link is working. Um, oh, I see Chris, I'm gonna promote him. Oh, and Patrick, per your email, Chris gave us the November minutes. He didn't give us the October yet. Oh. The other way around from what you said. It says November 2022 library trustee minutes. So he oh. hasn't submitted October yet. Okay, I'm confused because I thought he sent October's. Um, let's- Well, uh, I'm going by what the heading is here and it is the minutes from last meeting. Okay, so let's, uh, we're gonna have him clear us on that. Um, let's see, what, there's Chris. So once Chris unmutes there and everything will, We'll hear what we have here. Hello. Hey, Chris. Hey, Chris. Hi, Hi Ruby's here now too. That's good. So we have a quorum at this minute, uh, which is good. Um, Hi, Ruby. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, Ruby. Let's let's wait a second for see if Lauren comes on. Uh, Chris, we were just talking about the minutes there, and I'm confused here now. So um, you you sent us November's minutes, but not October's. I sent October and November to the full group okay i don't have october okay i sent it in the same email chain that the november one came in then oh. about 10 minutes later i sent you the october one as well oh i see that's probably why i missed it i probably thought it was the same email okay so i don't have that in front of me all right i can get it on my phone then do you have a date that you sent that um yeah let me just look at my it been like last Friday, was it? It was on Thursday at 12.50. Okay, I, I overlooked that and thinking it was the same email. All right. Hi, trustees. Writing up the minutes for November. Let's see. I've got uh, Klein, Halburn, Clark, McGlinchey, and Chang on this chain. And Holland back. Okay. Okay. Uh, but I can send it to you again if you want me to. And now Lawrence, Lawrence here too. Once Lauren unmutes. Uh, yeah, go ahead. If you want to just send it right now, then I can quickly read it. Thanks. Just yep. so I, I got the November, but what it was on a different email. The October was on a different email. Yeah, October came first at eleven forty-three, and then at twelve okay. fifty, twelve right. fifty, you got the November one. Sorry, if you can send it, that'd be great. Because I got the November, yeah. I didn't. I missed the October. Yeah, should be in your inbox now. Thank you. There we go. Okay. October seems so long ago now.
Yeah, I think we just had some miscommunication with the dis distribution of the minutes. Um, just trying to avoid violations of open meeting law by sending out communication to all of us. But uh, I figured in the interest of expediency and uh, if folks wanted to file an FOI for that, <laughs> they're certainly welcome to. It just shows the minutes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we can get started here. It's uh, yeah, it's five thirty-eight. I know there's an important planning board meeting tonight, but uh, but the hotel downtown. So, uh, the um, yeah, probably a lot of people attending that. Uh, let's just uh, let's start with a roll call. Uh, Lauren, you have to unmute to just say you're here. Oh yeah, I'm here. Great, thanks. Ruby. Here. Chris. Here. <laughs> Carol? Present. Yeah, and Pat, present. Excellent, great. Okay, minutes, that's where we are right here. So does everybody, ha has everybody seen or, or read the October minutes? Yes. Okay, yes. so uh, let's just have a motion to approve those and then we can discuss. Is there a motion to approve? Yeah, I... I... Lauren, okay, great. Second, somebody? I second. Great, that's Ruby, thank you. Discussion, questions? October minutes. I don't have anything. Great. So if there's not for October, then we uh, we can vote uh, all those um, in favor. We'll have to actually do a roll call vote again. All those in favor. Um, well, actually, just uh, just raise your hand for now. Make this easier. Just raise your hand if you're going to approve those the October minutes. Let's see here. Let's see hey, if everybody. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Uh, November's minutes. Um, is there a motion to approve those? I make a motion to approve November notes. Okay, thanks, Ruby. Uh, second, please. A second. Okay, Lauren, thanks. Questions, discussion, comments? Um, the only thing I know that, uh, Chris, we'll have to change the, the spelling of, of Ed's last name. Oh, did it come up as Abrahams or something? It came up as Abram. Oh, okay. It's in the middle. Uh, there's yeah. Any other thoughts on that? Okay, be it. There's none. Let's uh, just raise your hand. Show of hands again. Just raise your hands if you want to approve the November minutes. Uh, just do you want me to make the... And with the amendment, yeah, the amendment yep. of the spelling, yeah. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Do you know where that's at? I don't have it in. Uh, I can open it right in front in front of me. No, nope, it's, it's all right. I've got it. I'll just. It's about half. It's the only time you think he's mentioned. It's about halfway through, as I believe. Sure. Thanks. Okay, and that's also unanimous. That's excellent. And now we move right into Samara's um, report. Okay. Um for November, just to go through the uh, November statistics. Um, Libby, which is oh, AKA Overdrive, um, received 1,865 checkouts. Um, Mason Circulation, which is all materials um, and all libraries, so also via interlibrary loan, all checkouts was 7,022 checkouts. And Ramsdell, same scenario, was 1,018. Um, Mason in-person visitors was 5,916. Our front door, our new front door counter is up and counting. <laughs> um, and Ramsdell in-person visitors was 351, which is, an, I didn't uh, compare it to October because Halloween was, was a boon for uh, Ramsdell, but, um, but it's also a, a substantial increase from September. So, um, uh, I feel like Ramstall's getting more and more robust every day. Um, the budget is attached on the second page of the report. Um, it uh, includes the library's line items. Um, it, you also had requested last time to see the salary 
And that is on here as well, um, as well as the um, donation accounts and uh, state aid. We are entering um, budget season. So um, this will be my first rodeo. <laughs> um, and uh, we, uh, so what I will, my understanding is that uh, per perhaps tomorrow or early next week, I will be receiving a budget packet to, um, to work on the budget. And, um, and then my, my, my hope and plan is to bring that to the next trustee meeting which will then um, be in line with the budget schedule and, and all the different dates it needs to meet throughout the, the winter and spring. Can I ask a question on that, please, on the salary budget? Mm -hmm. Is this on a fiscal year basis? Yes. But so, I mean, if it's, if it's July to June, why have we only spent 141 on the, on the salary budget? We should be about halfway through, shouldn't we? This is the um, it's the balance as of a month ago, and it's July, August, September, October, four months. Okay, all right. That makes sense. We're also not sure how they uh, compensated uh, Talia and Donna uh, for the time that Amanda was not here. And I'm, I'm sure they did, but we don't know what that is. So uh, and also. You budgeted that amount, but you haven't had full staff. So that was budgeting as though you would have full staff. Um, you know, I can't I can't really speak very knowledgeably to all that was budgeted for this year because I wasn't part of that conversation, but okay. we are fully staffed. And my understanding is we have been fully staffed since the beginning of this fiscal year. Um, okay. And my other understanding, and again, I, you know, I'm not a hundred percent on this, but that the um, the director's salary was then, I believe the, 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 the difference between, um, the assistant director's salary and the director's salary was then taken and split between the two assistant directors for that, uh, interim period where they held down the fort. Um, that's. I'm not a hundred percent on all of that, but that I believe that's how it worked. Okay, uh, any questions on this at all? No. I think once we get into the next budget season, we'll have, you know, then we can drill into some of these things. Yeah. I would, I would imagine the inflation is, is going to take a number on many things like books and subscriptions um, and whatnot. So uh, yeah, it's probably going to be a, a challenge in time on that. All righty. So if there's no question on the budget, then I guess we're on to your next item there, the hotspots. Okay. So the hotspots are in. Um, there are six at Mason and four at Ramsdale. You can, you guys know, know the routine, you can check them out just like a book. You receive them for two weeks plus renewal. Um, you can connect up to 10 devices on them. Um, they, they're, they work like a dream. Um, so, and we have uh, advertised their presence on our social media, Facebook, website, all of that. So um, I'm glad that those are back in action. Um, which is really, you know, so useful if you're traveling, if you're moving, if um, you live in an area with not great connection, if um, it's difficult to afford internet, which is extremely expensive. And so um, this is one of the, the many ways that the library provides internet access to patrons. Um, I wanted to give you some updates a little bit on our marketing. As you know, Fran is the marketing manager at the libraries and um, she's just been doing such a tremendous job um, 
uh, our new revamped new look newsletter came out for the month of December. And um, we use MailChimp to uh, send out our new our communications. And, um, and we exceeded the, the free account. So um, now our subscribers are, su are such that we have to pay. I mean, perhaps mixed blessing, but that's all right. Um, I just as examples of what of our uh, social media numbers in um, in the past seven days, uh, Facebook has reached 898 people, um, and um, Instagram has 46.6 uh, .6 more accounts engaged this month than it did the month prior. Um, Fran's been doing some really fun things on social media, like. Uh, she uh, does library and book related memes on Monday and on Tuesday. Um, it's called The Thing on Tuesday. And this was the first Tuesday it happened where she features a different item in the library of things. So this week she featured our candle making kit. Um, something that you may have seen on uh, the library of Facebook account was uh, pictures of the display case which uh, recently went up and it's a, um, it's a uh, miniature uh, scene created by Tim Abbott, who is Talia Leodari's uh, husband. And uh, it's a scene of Boyle's War. And we also have the DVDs available there for uh, checkout. And it's just, it's received a tremendous response in house and also online. And my, my, I think that people who have been I'm intrigued by seeing it on Facebook have come into the library to see it as well and kind of every time I pass by it there's a different patron checking it out um, so that's that's been fun and I feel like our social media is kind of doing what it what we want it to do which is to bring people into the library um on in terms of some upcoming events we have um, for uh, Mason's Children's Department is going to be part of the holiday stroll that will be this Saturday. You can meet Pete the Cat, who is a beloved children's book character, and also have Pete the Cat uh, cupcakes, and there will be a goodie bag, and uh, Lori and Juliana work in the children's department at Mason will be outside uh, for that with Pete the Cat. And um, they've also started the gingerbread house take home kits. This is previously something pre COVID that would be done in the children's department. But um, since COVID it's, um, we have take home kits available and um, they went live just a few days ago and already um, there's a wait list for for the remaining. So, um, and at Ramsdell, we have a few things going on as well. This Saturday, um, an adult sci-fi book club will be meeting that um, I'm very excited about. A member of the community is um, spearheading. And um, so that will be on Saturday morning. And then next week on Saturday in the afternoon, we're going to do a community crafting event for winter, for the holidays, something akin to what we did for the um, Halloween decoration event as well. And that's really for all ages. So that's kind of what's going on and what's coming up. It's a little uh, briefer than our past meetings, but I think we met only two weeks ago and there was a holiday in between. And uh, so, but that's the report for November. Thanks, Samara. And any questions for Samara on that? Anything? No? Okay, good. The, uh, I guess, buildings and grounds here. Anything on that? Um, I can tell you that our uh, elevator is, uh, did not pass inspection. Um, mm. And it's uh, been out of commission for two plus weeks now. Um, we are still accessible, um, but it, it's really actually, the, I feel like the real burden is on the staff because um, our interlibrary loan comes in downstairs and there's, you know, up 
to, you know, 10 bins of books a day that need to be kind of schlepped up and down that have, you know, 30 books a piece in them. And so staff need to, it's usually something we would do on a cart and through the elevator, but now it's a kind of bin by bin schlep. So that's, um, mm -hmm. but the, you know, uh, all the processes of how to get it reinspected and pass inspection are, are in process. May I ask a question about that? Because I was there on Saturday in that room and Maria did pull her back carrying bins up and down the stairs mm -hmm. um, because I was I was in the room doing the cleaning the disc when that was happening. Mm -hmm. So because you don't pass inspection, that means automatically staff is not allowed to use the elevator. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So um, I am concerned because she said it, it was definitely, you know, she did definitely, I talked to her this tonight there and she said her back was better. But if, depending on how long that is, that's a real occupational hazard where we don't want to have to end up with a workman's comp injury. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I was encouraging her to say, look, instead of trying to carry the whole bin with all the books in it, maybe use a, you know, a canvas bag or something and carry smaller amounts. But I hope that whoever is handling work, you know, the, the ergonomics of it or the workman's comp, that if this is going to be long term, um, I am concerned. Uh, for people carrying those boxes up and down because the bins are large and it looked very awkward. And she did say she she wrenched her back doing it. Yeah, I hear you, Carol, and I'm concerned too. And I, you know, expressed so, my concern so to DPW yeah. and to town administration, and yeah. it will continue to. Um, and perhaps I'm just wondering if there's any way you you know they can be set up where they don't feel obligated to handle that big box of a bin. Mm -hmm. with all the books in it and carry it up and down the stairs if if yeah. you maybe you can take leadership and saying no only take 10 at a time or let's do them in this canvas bag or whatever because it it did look pretty awkward it and she said she was trying to balance it on her hip mm -hmm. i'll talk um, to um you know i think one way to do it which is also not ideal is we can take the cart on this kind of circulate yeah. through, through Great Barrens. You said that's fine the, if the weather's okay. So we, but, that's yeah. fine when the weather's okay. And I mean, like, I, I hope this is resolved before the weather is not okay. Yeah. Um, but let me let me talk with um, uh, Christine, who is the head of adult circulation and, um, uh, and just kind of think about ways that we can ease the burden on the staff in the interim. Well, I was very relieved well, that you I, said- I, I have a okay. question about this. Mm -hmm. So, a person can't go on the elevator, but is the elevator completely um, disabled or it's just not, hasn't passed inspection? Um, it, it, the elevator works, but, um, but it's, okay. it, we so, really can't use it. I mean, we would can, be can, can you put the bin of books on the elevator and send it where it needs to go and meet it at the other end? Perhaps, but I'm very, there was an inspector here and he informed me of the fines that would be accompany the violations. So I'm really reluctant to. Okay, because it would just be the books, not the person. I know, yeah. No, they would be nice <laughs> if the books could take a trip in the elevator. Yeah, <laughs> seems so tempting. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, that's, you know, that's, uh, if, if, I, if nothing moves along, there's uh, I will um, I will suggest it. Right. Thank you. <laughs> right. So, so Samara, so these are the books that are brought in by CW Mars, the delivery. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can't they just go in the front door with a dolly? I mean, can't can't those guys deliver them upstairs and then use the history room temporarily, shut it off? And they have it? they have been doing um, some side entrance delivery. Yes, they have they have made uh, adjustments um, for us, um, but um, but there is still, um, you know, some up and down that needs to happen. Wow. Okay. That's so you know. I I um I'm not a buildings and grounds person, but I do have um a a little report. Um, last <laughs> month, right? We talked about the um that kiosk in front of the ramsdale mm -hmm. um so i've been in touch with the people who are responsible for it and they are going to take it out of there as soon as possible i asked uh that that they take it out before the ground freezes and so that's where we're at what was well, the group 
It's actually the Great Barrington Land Conservancy. Well, I mean, here, here's a question because the, you know, it's a historic property there and, and that was approved. Are we better off keeping the bones of that thing and, and using it as, you know, if there was artwork or something in there, the, the frame is, is what's bad, the plexiglass and everything. Um, but it seems like uh, Samara mentioned this too, that's in there really solid in, into that. I mean, it was well-made as far as construction of it and it's really embedded into the ground. So if we, if we lose that, then we have to go through the rigmarole of getting it uh, approved by everybody to put something back in. Well, do so, we do we want something there specifically? I thought that it was also a problem because of what's going to happen with the reconfiguration. In well, the that's front. true too. I yeah. thought that yeah, it kind of needed to go where the you know I don't know where exactly the thing is in relation to this ramp, but this ramp is it's going to yeah. take up some real estate, as I understand. So it might be yeah. a move issue. Yeah, and, and yeah, and I, I told them that, you know, we needed them to do it since they, they put it there. I said, even, you know, we approved it, but we need them to take it out. And we're not really, you know, I said, I told, reminded them that it was in there pretty solid and they said they would uh, do it. So I guess uh, I'm going to stay in touch with the person. It turns out it was Christine Ward, not Suzanne Ward. Um, but um, anyway, so it's in the works. That's great because it, it looks bad, you know, so that's, that's really, really excellent. Um, you know, and as far as uh, where are we, is there any festive decorations being put in the libraries this year? There are festive Outside? decorations, yes. Yeah. There are um, wreaths, beautiful, fresh wreaths from Taft Farms on the front doors of the Mason and on the pillars in front of Ramsdell. And then there's um, other wreaths that are not fresh and real on the side of Mason as well. Okay. And then inside there's also, um, Jane uh, does the decorations. And so there's lots of lovely holiday type things all about. And also our book display this month is all about uh, handcrafted uh, gifts for winter, for all the holidays that are coming up, and cookbooks and baking books and all of that kind of holiday winter stuff. Okay, great. I think the only other thing on buildings is, and this was uh, way before your time, Tamara, but the, I had, we had submitted a uh, proposal uh, for CPA money to uh, restore uh, and renovate Ramsdale's windows. It's a historic building and all of that. And uh, the windows are, are solid, but they're, they're falling apart. And I was, I was by, um, I took a picture of it over the weekend. And, and on top of everything else, part of the problem is the paint is completely coming off those things. It's all lead paint. So what, what, what the history of this is that the, um, the town, actually Chris Rambolt, asked us to pull the, uh, the request for funding for that. And they said they would find a way to get it done. Um, you know, it's, it hasn't happened. Um, it's expensive uh, to do it the right way. It should really be done the right way. But this point is falling apart. And so if any of you are by Ramsdale, if you look at the building on the left side, the front, you'll see even strips of molding. They're actually coming right off the window at this point. So it's not going to replace these windows. It's going to be astronomically expensive. So. Um, so Samara, the other thing is it used to be that uh, for, for years with the, the trustees, there was always somebody, a trustee was like in charge of talking to the town of buildings, grounds. Chris did it for a while. Um, and uh, the, so then it got to the point where they said, no, it's better if they just went through the library director communicating with the town about this stuff. So this is the first time it's really coming up. I didn't realize it was that bad. It was, nothing was ever done. I mean, it doesn't take a lot of money to, to cover those, the, at least the trim, to just brush it down a little bit, take the lead paint that's falling off onto the ground and, and just put some type of sealant on it. But now it's too late for the year. So anyway, it's, uh, it's pretty critical. And the ones behind the building have, are even like worse. People don't see those, but it's just, we, we don't want to get the bill to try to replace those windows. So I think if you can put that on whoever you need to, probably Joe, I guess, Somebody needs to know that this has been going on for half a decade 
and they, they need to take care of those windows. The other thing is the doors at Ramsdale need, are gonna need to get sealed again. They were sealed, it was two or three years ago at this point. Um, and it's, that's not a big deal either. And it's too late for this fall or winter, whatever this is, uh, but it really needs to be done in the spring. Those doors, if we had to replace soils, it would be probably $20,000, $30,000. Uh, so if that's just a couple of tiny little things that are preserved rams, that would be great. Um, anybody else have any thoughts or anything like that? Yeah, Pat, do you know sure. if um, kids would be exposed to any lead paint when well, they it's are a, in the library? It, it's, uh, it's outside, Ruby. So this is all exterior things. And uh -huh. kids usually don't play on the grounds there. But I guess if they did, it's... But, you know, it's no different than the Housatonic School where the paint's falling off that, too, on the windowsills. And that's definitely lead, too. When they do remediation on the windows and they may have some paint chips falling into the ground around the building, mm -hmm. you, you can get a lead inspector come for free from the state of Massachusetts. And he will come and tell you exactly where the lead paint is and what needs to be done. And that's free. So, you know, if you are planning to redo the windows, it might be good for that guy to come through just so we know what we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Because you can't have the lead paint from those windows as they're being pulled out. You can't have them falling on the ground around the building because then the kids will track it into the library from the grounds. That's a great point. Um, what they usually do for this, because we, we had studied this a little bit when we went to CPA for the money, um, Forbes Library in Northampton did a massive uh, restoration of windows. It took about a year. And what, what they do is there's very few places that, that deal with these historic windows and do everything properly. What they do is they literally take the window out. So there's not as much uh, exposure, like you're talking about, of stripping and doing everything else. They do it off-site. Um, they do it at their facilities, and then when they bring the windows back, they're already resealed, they're already done, uh, recalked, rebuilt if need be. Um, so it's a whole process, and that's probably why. So the lead's not going all over the place if you try to take care of it on site. Uh -huh. um, but that'll be probably the town again because it's the town's liability if there's a lead problem. Um, and it's this is probably going to be new for Joe Aberdale. He wasn't here when any of this stuff came up before, as far as. Uh, running the DPW. But anyway, it's just stuff we kind of got to get on their list for, for a number of reasons there. Would be good. Um, let's see here. I think, is there anything else? I mean, coming up, we're going to be busy. Budget season is always busy for all the groups. You have to put your thinking caps on, you know, that much because the way costs are going, it's, it's a tough, tough situation. Um, but that's all I can think of, unless any of you have any thoughts. I don't think we have any, um, other humans here. Let me see. Oh, maybe we do. I don't see. Um, Maurice may be here. Marie, you're free to speak if you have any questions or you want to comment at all. Um, otherwise, uh, there's no media here. And so if you don't have anything, we can actually conclude and you can watch what's happening with the hotel downtown. All right. All right. All right. All right look at everybody. Look at stay healthy. Have a great holiday season. And believe it or not, the year is just about over. For us, it is, it's over tonight, actually. And uh, we'll see you next year. Yeah, thank you, Pat. Thank you. Guys, you. Take care. Stay, healthy. Stay healthy. Stay healthy. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.